Hi there everybody, Flash Drasman back again in 18th century Paris, trying to survive and move along. Let's return to the estate, we'll remind myself where we are. Ah, we've got a rest day. We're meeting Sadotis, what's our rest like? Exhaustion. Questions, do we take a rest for Sadoti tomorrow? Because we've got nothing else planned after that, have we? I'm thinking, let me have a look, what we, where are we are with it? We've, we, we can afford perils an issue. That's is, that is a massive, massive issue. That current objective. Do we researching Armand? We've got import export. Okay. Mm. Okay. Point of interest. So that's the point of interest. Plus Royale, that's free money if I remember rightly. We get rid of stress there. Let's research on one. I want to get the movie story, get the story moving. After reading about a man that matches Armand's, Armand's, Armand's description in a newspaper article, you head down to where you, he was last spotted. Hopefully, you'll be able to find some clues in regards to his disappearance. Visit the location. Getting ready in a flash, you head out into the street with a newspaper and your journal. With a newspaper and your journal, determined to find some evidence of where our man could possibly be. The journalist who wrote the article mentioned a nearby bakery. It sounded familiar to you from your various walks about Paris. You curse yourself for having to rely on such thin evidence. It's a description of one who might be our man reported to be seen near a bakery, who might be the one you vaguely remember. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. There's no guarantee he'll ever come back here. Is it? There's barely a guarantee he was even there at all. Okay, it's utterly maddening as you still to remember what he, what's even motivating you right now. That's the point. I mean, like, why are we even bothering? Because I love him. Mon must be rude the day he wronged me. <laughs> I like that. It get it bears. <laughs> I love the fact that it's, it, it has no effect to the game whatsoever. I just think that's fantastic. Just, <laughs> I just, it's, it's got no effect to the game. It's just like, get a choice. I just like that. Our man, our man must rue the day he wronged me, and for that I must find him. Yeah, really. <clears throat> you feel a rush of energy as you say to yourself, you can't stop now until our man truly understands the extent of his displeasure. <laughs> yeah, he will know my wrath. You managed to find the bakery, but you're uncertain as to where to start your search. You're about to step aside when you feel a tap on your shoulder. Hello. It's... <coughs> we should get off the street, he says quietly. We found him. That was easy. <coughs> you're struck drum with shock when he leads you off the street into a nearby tavern. <coughs> with no other patrons. The staff look at the two of you with a mixture of confusion and indignation. As if the very idea of customers affects them to the core. <clears throat> Even after sitting there for a few minutes, nobody approaches your table. This ha this might explain why there's no other customers in here. <laughs> yeah, really. <clears throat> I'm glad, glad to see he, glad to see you. he says his eyes start to his, his eyes stand deeply into your own. I've never been so happy to see you. How how dare you? How dare you speak to me after all of this? What happened to you? What's going on? Why why any of this? Okay, let's go with that one. <clears throat> I can see that this turn of fortune has done nothing to do with your acquisitive nature. He's a, I don't like this guy at all. I should hope some. We're meant to be marrying the fella. I've come to Paris, and as you can tell by my own dwellings, I had to live very fug frugally. <clears throat> as much as I enjoy my little luxuries, my money was better spent on other pursuits in the city. Okay. As at any part, I need to make inroads with powerful people, including one Maxime de Temer terms Temes. He he shakes his head ruefully. <coughs> oh, hang on, he's a bit annoyed. As by side myself with rage when I heard that I'd they had lashed out at you to get vengeance on me, I knew that I'd angered them with my proposals, but I had no idea they'd sink to such wretched behaviour. But we dealt with them, mate. You know, we sorted them out. In fact, he says in a low voice, "I believe that you're the one who sent those men upon." Hang on. <coughs> In fact, he says in a low voice, I believe they're, they're, the, they're the one who sent those men to do violence upon me. Okay. All right. Thankfully, my father's constant insist... Thank thankfully, my father's constant insistence that I studied the art of pugilism proved to be wise. After a great struggle and several smart applications of a 
candelabra to the heads and shoulders I managed to drive them both from the house, he stands proudly. But a telltale wind suggests he might have been recovering from some some injuries, okay. However, I have no idea when those villains would, would return and how many of their associates they'd bring with them, so I had to flee that very night. I know in my mind that it, sound, it was a sound decision, but in my heart I've regretted it ever since. <coughs> so is he saying that they attacked him in the house we're living in? If that's the case, how come... I can't remember a name now. Our maid hasn't said anything. I'm so sorry. Please, I've already forgiven you. I'm just glad you're alive. You can budge us. Uh, you can... Apologies all you wish, but my the words won't heal this. No, I've got nothing to apologise for. Yeah, exactly. I've dead for weeks I thought that you would say that. Okay, I've lost favour with him. I mean, but like, pff, and? But I cannot say that I don't deserve it at least somewhat. Perhaps you'll be able to forgive me with time when you see that I have good reason for all of this. <clears throat> when you see what's at stake for us. Of course, right now I have to. Ri I have. I still have to risk going to the States General, <clears throat> and I have many important things to do there. Thankfully, nobody can. Ri nobody can risk selling me while I'm there. But I have to keep living. I have to keep my living situation to the secret due to threat of ambush. He says while he pulls out a piece of paper, begins to write on it. I'm still unsure what the fav. What fate. What <clears throat> we keep getting favour. I'm still unsure what we do with that favour, or whether that's just kind of. Something that happens beyond the scenes. I shall endeavour to find out because we keep getting favour of people, but I'm not sure how it affects the game and what, or whether it affects it underneath the surface that we don't see, or it's something we can use later. Anyway, he has here the paper he, <coughs> which he's written on a, an address on. It's a house on the western edge of the city. Don't worry, it's just as charming as the one you're living in at the moment. A month's purpose is now available to visit on the Paris map. While I can't move back in with you, at least be able to visit me there, visit me where I'm staying. I'll do, I'll, I'll do as soon as I can. Un moment, Armand, what do you mean by where, where we're staying? Okay. Yeah, I want, ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, well, you see. Armand, where the devil, uh, what the devil are you doing here? We need to, the woman asks as she walks into the tavern. Yeah, who are you? She freezes in her tracks when she sees you. Who is this? Ah, space introductions are in order. I think so, mate. Look at her face. She's not happy to see me. Look <laughs> at smug. Look at his look at his face compared to hers. What's going on here? I bet this is Joanne de Jardine. She leads a political society I've been working with. Uh, Joanna, this is Yvette de Kerr, my fiancée. She managed to track me down, a man says quite proudly. <coughs> Your fancy after all this time, I just assumed. Uh, Joanna trails off, looking at you over carefully. Have we met her already? Well, no matter if so if someone like her could find you, then we aren't doing a very good job of hiding. We have to go. Look at her face. <coughs> There's a contradiction there, entirely. Just when I finally find her again, absolutely not. The longer we stay on the streets, the more likely that is... Uh, some assassins runs a blade through your ribs. Joanna replies in a soothing voice, resting her fingers <coughs> on the back of his hand. You won't, you won't see her again at all if that happens. Fair enough. I don't like her at all. I suppose that's the reason why admits, running his fingers through her hair. Vet, you must know. You know how to find me. I, will <coughs> I want to tell you more, but for now I need to go. Don't worry, this won't last forever. <coughs> With that, they leave. I've got a... Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, less, I'm all in this situation, unless I like it. You exit the tavern, your mind swirling with dark possibilities and a heavy sense of dread. You found a man, but now you're wondering if that was for the best. Mm. Okay, right. Duchess Agnes Albon requests the attendance of Yvette Duco. Ducot. I'm assuming that's June. I don't accept it. Why the devil not? We'll like a good party. Right, well, that's all. We've got a bit spare. We're now we're seeing our man Ludovicio tomorrow, today. Whatever day of the week it is. Rendezvous. Let's check our wardrobe. We can't go like that because, as much as we are very attractive, we can't go dressed like that. Okay. Uh, we want something church. I'll do. <coughs> Rendezvous. Exhaustion for my credibility. We can afford a credibility. It's a pell we need to sort out. Okay. After spending the first half of the day to get ready, you head out for your rendezvous. 
Unfortunately, you can feel the exhaust you're setting tonight. It's going to be a long night. Yeah, fine. We know that. The cost is five credibility. You return to the Lilic Gwinnett Paradise, where it's already packed with enthusiastic patrons clapping in time with the band's music, drinking great gulps of wine and dancing. Ludovic arrives at the same time as his self approaches. He stands, cl he stands close, to but with just enough distance to provide him with plausible deniability, should anyone become suspicious of you, t of, of you two. Of a blessed of look upon you, he says with a smile, and he catches as on in a few choice places. <laughs> you gain a stack of matter of favour with Ludovicia, but what can we do with it though? Luckily, he, he takes his gaze off you and examines your location. L Ludovicia chuckles to himself when he looks around at Gwyn Gin Gwet Paradis. I see we're going to experience some authentic French culture here. You gain favour. Despite the boisterous nature of the proceedings, the patrons give you and Ludovico a respectful amount of distance. However, you can see that, that, that you can see that the two of you are, are some source of, or the source of some amusement. Many patrons wonder what a priest is doing in an establishment like this. That's a very good point. A few years later, you realise it's starting to get late, and the two of you depart together. Okay. After. You've after you wonder if Ludovic offers to walk you home, soon you find yourself chatting and laughing together as you stroll home under the glow of the city lamps. Oh yes, I almost forgot Ludovic, Ludovic here suddenly helps. He starts rummaging through his bag looking for something either present for you. Ew. Finally he pulls out a le uh, leather book out of his bag and hands it to you. The lamp catches a gilt gilted le lettering on the cover. Don Quixote. Yeah, I apologise, I can't say that. Quicks it out. I don't, I don't, anyway, yeah, that one there. Read the title. I originally started reading it in French to learn the language fast, but it's always been a favourite of mine. Uh, yeah. It's an adventure, it's, it's a comedy, and also there's some delightfully biting social commentary. In short, it's my favourite kind of story. I'll always treasure the sense of romance. You gain the favour. Gestures to his Cossack. Obviously, my situation has allowed me to follow his example, but such is life. And what uh, we do what we can. That's not all. He says in a low voice. Open it up. Equal parts curious, curious and suspicion. You page through the book at first, you don't say anything, but suddenly you start finding pages with the margins are filled in densely packed notes. However, these notes aren't about books or, or its characters. They're notes on the most prominent people in Paris. Preferences, rivalries, alliances are all here. This is a spy's gold mine. Mon dieu, please, I've, uh, I've done good work. Let's not take the Lord's name in vain. What I know, I'm not the best priest, but I, I at least try sometimes. Still, I'm glad you like it. He glances around to make sure you're both alone. Let me show you a few interesting things. Ludovica spends the next few minutes teaching you how to use a book. Apparently, there's some, there's some way of using the chapter to also find different kinds of information quickly. Ew. Now that you're seeing level information at your fingertips, you're getting excited. This is a valuable book, valuable indeed. You've lost a bit of peril. Happy days. For the last few months I've written many letters back to Rome and lately I find myself in a difficult spot. Here in France the church's values have become extremely divided. The priests in the city are mostly second or third sons of noble families, so they fever, 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 fervently support the crown. On the other hand, the priests in the country have watched their parishes starve and support the revolution or at least its, or at least its ideals. My superiors are asking me if I draw a direction or recommendation. What should, I, what should I tell them to support? Right, and I feel like the crowd about the best choice. Uh, do, 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 do. Trust your initiate. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Right, the crown has all the popes I sent for centuries, and the reason why for us to turn on our backs right now. Churches move forward to crown by a decent amount. Thank you, Vita. I was clear. I wasn't thinking clear, and you're the most safe, savvy person I know. This helped a lot. This year, chat for a while long. The cost. Uh, Conversation quickly straying from politics and back to more palatable subjects. <coughs> a church bell chimes in the distance, announcing it's nearly midnight. I've uh, I'd forgotten about the time. I'm sorry, but I must leave early. I must leave early. I promise you, but I would clean the reliquary tonight. Reliquary. Yeah. Sorry, I've lost the ability to speak today. Tonight. Buona notte, Yvette. Thankfully, you're only a few bucks from your home. It's not quite the greatest misfortune ever before you. You walk home, clutching your book to your chest, idly stroking its spine with your thumb. Yet something feels off. There are a few people. There are a few people out on the streets, and some of them seem pensive. But you don't know why. You hear footsteps picking up behind you. 
suddenly you find yourself face to face with a man that simply radiates malice. He holds an empty hand out towards you, you can tell he's clutching a weapon in his hidden hand. Some of the people are staring, fearfully watching this play out, but none of them look willing to risk their lives by intervening. Madam, I'm here to make an offer. Give me that book and I'll spare your life. Ooh, what do we do? Uh, <clears throat> no, I don't make deals with ruffians. Oh, this could end badly. He says that you, you can see some symptoms to get. Do you really think I won't shoot you? You know your eyes are Tim, the clutch book tightly as he can. He glances around, notice that all the people watching him. They're too scared to intervene, but they're still witnesses. He slowly, carefully takes a, spec, a step back from you. Another, but um, you're a bold one, madam. I'll give you that, he says, wagging his finger. Just remember, everyone's looking till the day they aren't. He makes a throat slitting motion before he hurries away, disappears into the alley. Wow, that was you getting a staggering amount of peril. You don't say there, blimey. Heart pounding, you managed to reach your home without further incident. A Camille is there waiting for you. Bonjour, Madame Chine Chinat, with the usual cheeriness. How's your night with Father Dotty? <laughs> I'm well, Camille. I'm just slowly losing control of my life. Oh, everything went splendidly. <laughs> I like Camille. I do. Uh, I'm well, but I'm just, I'm just slowly losing control of my life, which is, I agree with. Oh, all right, madam. Camille, uh, Camille replies with a mixture of hesitation and concern. With that, you head upstairs, take notes and wonder about the night's events, hopefully get some rest. If it feels like there's a bit of a cut there, there is. <coughs> I apologise. The wife and the boy are out and they've left me at home with a beef in the slow cooker and asked me to turn it over and it smells lovely so I don't ruin my dinner by not turning it over which is another point do you even know do you call it dinner or tea I call dinner is lunch but my wife says his dinner is tea very complicated anyway let me know in the comments you even know you've got breakfast lunch and dinner do you call it dinner or do you call it tea anyway right on that side on that side from that rambling Right, okay. Right, that has got me concerned. Right, so basically, we've got some cutthroat. No, so I am. No, so I've got some book. So, what's stopping me to ask invading the house? Right, so what, well, let's have a look at our, Let's go back to the estate. Let's look in our journal. Right, so, Ramon, yep. We've got so the crown. The crown is in power. The revolution is there. The church is heavy aligned to the crown. The military is as powerful as the crown and is heavily, but is also in favour of the crown. The bourgeoisie have got no power and in favour of revolution. So at the moment, we're hedging our bets with the crown. However, I'm still not entirely confident that's really. Tell you what we should do. Let's go and sell. Let's go and sell our gossip because we could do with, we could do the cash injection. Right. So what we're going to do now? Got to calendar export. We've got we've got nothing for about a week. So let's go and visit our friend. A popular if we screw for new paper. Yep. Let's visit the location. See what he's got safe himself. You enter Pierre's office to find it more disorderly than usual. With Pierre pacing frantically in the middle of all this chaos, he looks at me and exclaims, "Oh, madam, thank God you've arrived." I've been keenly checking. Do, 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 do. Lost information. I guess. Very fraction. Lost. Do, do, do. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Sell gossip. Uh, there's no chance. Perfect. Uh, one in twenty. Fantastic. Go home. Perfect. That was easy. I've, I have just promised myself gossip within. I, I, was actually, I think that's actually a mistake, but oh well. All right, let's go. We've got too exhausting, so let's not worry about that. We've got nothing for battle. We've got no parts for about a week. So let us go into Explore Paris again. Hmm. Are we ready to do that yet? So we've got over here, we've got the Maid and the Archer. These are incidents, the perils of journalism. Import and export. The only confess. Let's go to import and export. Uh, docks of foreign alcohol import of dubious, of dubious legalities. Looks for to help him move his wares. Ew. That involves risk. 
which give the state of our power. I'm not sure I want to do that. The base festival convinced Foster to postulate some safety scheme of his smart promiscuity. Again, I just don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss to explain what. It may must be something that happens behind the scenes. But where are we going with Sadati? Because I was in the impression the game would lead us to seducing him. That's my assumption was going to be. We don't seem to be doing that. And so we'll. Uh, this one is risk. I'm not. Even, I don't think we can't afford to up our peril anymore. Because I don't. I don't know what's going. But as soon as it hits that, we're in bother. That's not going to tune from that. Peril. Walking in the market, you come across your own maid of all works. You seem to be in a bit of trouble. Saying that, I don't know this, but let's let's go and help out our maid. Let's go and help Camille. You spend the day walking through the city. I've just gone about. I don't want to up the risk, but then I go and do exactly that. Be peril. You spend the day walking through the city, exploring the neighbourhood near the marketplace. The air of pun pungent, fresh scents and crisp vegetables, fresh fruits to less to less fresh fish. You slowly picked up a sound of a familiar voice. You start slipping through the crowd in its own direction. You stumble on Camille, her arms full, uh, her arms full, the basket of full of the day's great of the day's groceries. However, she's been stopped by a watchman of the Gret Royale, one of the infamous archers. He's berating Camille in the middle of the street. Where did he get those? He demands, gesturing all her groceries. Quash, but Monsieur, you saw me buy these. I've got them over there. She points in the direction of her market stall. I saw no such thing. She's blustering, like suggesting he could have been paying attention to the surroundings. Where's your receipt? Camille's like dart from side side. She turns her feet away from him. Something about this line of questioning is making her uncomfortable. I, uh, I never get receipts, Monsieur. What? That's ridiculous. Why not? Well, I don't. I don't. I don't. I can't. Camille start, starts to start looking at shamefully at the ground. You don't got to give me a very good reason not to haul you away. He growls at one of his hands, extending low, out low with his palm up. Ah, uh, that's so. That's what this is about. Do do do. I'm so glad you found it. Please take my payment for uh, this payment for my uh, this payment for my thank. Uh, I'm sure uh, a man has stolen my purse. Uh, do we pay him off or do we monsieur monsieur a man has stolen my purse? Ooh. Uh, uh, step into watchman Camille. You stealthily slip a few coins into his ass. Since he glances around immediately, mood changes for the better. Oh, that's easy enough. I'm so glad to be of help. He says, an almost grin that that tips uh, tips <laughs> as he tips his hat to you. Now, if you finally excuse me, I need to find some more citizens in public service. <laughs> Excellent. Basically, you're gonna, you're gonna bully people to give you cash. Basically, with that, he shuffles off into the car, leaving you and Camille alone. Well, madam, that was amazing. She gushes. Normally, I never I remember to bribe the authorities, but something came over me and I completely forgot. <laughs> Excellent. You get a little credibility. Yeah. Yes, the desk got Camille by her daily errands. It takes a few minutes for her to feel completely comfortable again, but but it comes eventually. Cool. I like Camille. Right. The, with the waking up with the union, Camille seems to have left a letter for you on your nightstand. Picking up, examine the outside of the letter. It bears a sigil, a sigil nor neither the sigil nor him. it is simply sealed with a blob of unstamped wax however the mystery is solved in a moment you open it you recognize ludovica's handwriting it's certainly well practiced but it still puts some accent marks in the wrong places dear chevette chair chevette if i know you as well as i think you do you've already figured out who wrote this well i cannot risk too many specifics if it appears that i'll that i'll be alone in my chambers for the foreseeable future as all my all of my fellow occupants will be absent due to commitment due to our commitment in the countryside. You've been so generous for the time of the ladies last few weeks, I would like to repay you with some pop hospitality. Ew. Reaching the end, you put that down, consider this unexpected opportunity, you pick up and flip through the meticulous notes in a journal and quickly deduce his home address. Clandestine meetings are available in your Paris map. Ooh, in fact, you could visit him at the moment. Uh, accept, close, cool right i'm think right so we've got right, let's have a look about so we've got nothing until we meet old sedotti it's his house happy days all right cool all right okay right so let's let's have a look at the calendar not calendar let's look at paris right so we've got hessian doorman OK, 
Okay, we're not. Let's just not. I'm not going there. That's too risky. We got. We got to get our peril down. Uh, dance together. It's fully happened. Woman that newly rediscovered fiance. He's Jesse Tivia Beck. Woman with teen Saint Jack the life. We could do that. We could do that. And we've got pairs of journalism. Right. Okay. Let's do. Let's do that because there's no risk. Hopefully, he says. <clears throat> you're on the streets of Paris, as always, you're looking for an opportunity of some sort. But certain malaise drags you out to every step. It's exhausting. It's exhausting, per se. It's not exhausting, per se, but it certainly makes things more difficult. Perhaps this is a common in a life such as yours, where it's difficult to truly separate one's labour from one's leisure. As you ponder this quandary, you feel a tap on your shoulder, and you find yourself face to face with another than your fancy old man. In fact, I managed to finish my business earlier today. We very silly get to see each other. How do you feel about joining me for a little moment? And I hope to think of any particular reason object. You follow him to the eastern edge of past a certain Gwyn Gret Paradis. The work the work day is far from over yet, somehow they seem already to, or seem, seem to already have a good crowd. It's a merry place indeed. It's a bit rash and rustic. Perhaps it will make a good place to take someone on a rendezvous, someone who enjoyed more lively and honest entertainments. I admit I've got grown fond of this place. Do do do. I can see why. Uh, let me think. Don't worry, vet. Uh, nobody here knows who the devil I am. He replies, only only some of the wealthy, the powerful, and extremely politically active consider me a danger. The common man has no quarrel with me. I'm just here. As a, just I'm here, here. I'm just another person. A man grabs a table for both of you and orders a house wine. It arrives in a clay pitcher and the vintage is completely unknown. Then again, this doesn't fill out the place where patrons care about the specifics of their refreshment. Merely quantity and potency. A few glasses later, you notice the tempo of the music starts to pick up. It extends across to you. Would you care to dance? We dance a romantic, elegant minuet. A dance of vigorous and passionate waltz. Let's go a vigorous and passionate waltz. You take his hand and join some of the among, uh, You take his hand and join him among the other dancers. Choosing dance a waltz together, your movements together are synchronized and powerful. You feel he's breathing as he dances so close together. You almost you're almost cheek to cheek. The music isn't really suited for this dance, but feel, but that but that feels beside the point for a place like this. A waltz is, is more of an Austrian dance, but Armand seems remarkably familiar with it. You can feel the pressure of stairs at the back of you. On, at your backs as you dance together. While this time, while times are changing, there are those who are still view partner dancing as indecent. Then again, they can take their compliments, complace up with the hangman if they if they care so much. You and a man must defy the convention for a lot. You, you and a man have def I've been defying convention for a long time already. Why stop here? Now that you are on a man a truly, you find a, you find a question coming to mind. Man, who's that man from the village of Manu called Charles? Charles, the bookseller, I'm on a surprise. Years ago, once years ago, once I devoured every book on a political theory that I could find, I started to order them from him. He lives in Avignon and has a very had a, had a much easier time obtaining the latest imprints. Eventually, my book started driving letters from him, asking my opinion on the issue, on that this issue or that, and we stuck up a frequent correspondence. Perhaps a year later, he asked if I would go. I would be interested in doing a lot, sight of like minded individuals. Who turned out to be a Frankish, Frankish Habsburgian society. The rest, as I say, is history. Ooh. So the music winds down. You step away from the dancers and revelers arm and arm. The two of you walk back through the city gates to Paris to get proper. There's where I meet with part Mon Monchery. But I hope you see you again. Things may be chaotic now, but I know we'll, we'll make it. We'll make it through this. You find your way home. You consider day's events and your time with Amand. Uh, mm -hmm. So my heart, it does my heart well to see him again. I fell on the man because he was a big fish of swan. I see that now. I've, yeah, let's go with that one. Your mind returns to manifold difficulties, intrigues, and cock pain your time as you walk home, trying to organise your thoughts. There are too many possibilities to, cons to consider. Twenty <coughs> fourth, seventeen eighty nine. Uh, you look up. You look up at the sound of Camille knocking on the door from Gordon, Madame. Yep. Yeah, we'll pay that. 
Miss Ibuku, madame, she says with a curtsy as you hand over the money. Okay, we've, 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 money's not an object at this moment in time. Camille leaves, leaves to deliver the money, and with that, the business concluded. Your day may continue. Alrighty. <coughs> what are we going to do today then? Right. Also, we've got a lot, a lot less parties. I wonder if that's coincidence. I wonder why that is. We've got. Yeah, notables, just two notables. That's not what to do. There's no change in that, but it's going to be not updated for a while. Nine days left. Let's see. Let's let's see if I can do that. Cause, right. Let's go to calendar. Let's go explore Paris. Let's go to Place Royale. Yeah, tour for gossip. Visit location. We want crown gossip. Visit location. You turn to the place where Allah hub of all such gossip, social news, slander, scandals. If there was a secret, if there was a secret telling secret or salacious rumor, this is the place to find it. Now, only now, your goal is slightly different. You're looking for mysterious skilled master of letters that sent you the message early. He said he was interested in helping you, but you've also deceived before. You press that of King Louis the Thirteenth. I can't remember this letter. Uh, the census go to survey the area. Specifically, you're looking for someone that appears to be looking for someone else. A few minutes, you hear someone meaningfully clear their throat behind you. Let's see. I mean, I suppose you get the same art. You get the same artistry for several different things. Henry Van the Cart, your serious man who cars a man says to you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Monsieur Van the Cart. What's this about? It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Get support. I know that you're getting involved. Major pleasure to see us. As it were, I can see. I, I can see why too. After those rights tensions have risen, if I were a betting man, I'd say that things in past are going to get worse before they get better. With that in mind, I want to offer my services as a forger of letters. A kind of woman like yourself can obviously get could obviously get used to some sort of political notes accidentally. Let me see that again. A canny woman like yourself could obviously get quite a few, quite quite some use out of a few political notes accidentally leaked to the right people in the right positions of power. While I can't directly influence the crown of the revolution, I'm certain I will be able to deliver a significant push to the loyalty of the church, military church of bourgeoisie. Yep, yeah, wonderful. You, uh, you can report my, to my office at any time. We'll discuss the terms there. He says then, has your business card, which only has an address on it, no name or all indication of what the business does. Last of letters now available to visit on the Paris map. This would cost you 50 livres. I know this isn't cheap, but sure, it's paltry fee compared to the possible change in the course of history. Now, I must take my leave, he says, with the curtain on, please consider my, consider my offer carefully. He walks a disbelief into the crowd. You will have to stroll around the past, so hopefully you're about to find some juicy gossip. Saying that, that's edge of conversation, you stroll around the square, pretend to be a traveller just admiring the apartments and gardens. So now, you manage to over here, something useful, Pierre will be, inter uh, will be a very interesting to this. Church mm. gossip, I want you crown the society of the square starts to filter out they didn't opportunity to blah 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 yeah fine that's not going to help is it really <coughs> uh quest attendance do, 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 do. okay when is that <coughs> close when's that i've accepted when is it oh it's uh i'm gonna close it's there so we've got we've got stuff coming up next month Okay. <coughs> well, let's let's just spend the day resting. Let's have a look at the map first of all. So we've got we've got so hang on a second. We've got clandestine meetings. We've got master of letters, and we've got I'm on purpose. So what are you? Oh, I, uh, as invited to meet him at the Abbey, where he's staying while the other priests are out of town for business. Ooh. Going to the map. So what we're going to do? We'll do that. Master, let's let's go home. Let's visit. Let's spend the day resting at home, and then we'll go to Ludovicio. <coughs> yep, we know what happens. That level of vision is gone. Let's see if we can accept. Let me look at the dates on that. Close. Oh, guys, let us go to explore Paris, and let's see if we can. Let's see if we can pell. Ooh, blimey, that could be risky. Visit the location. Let's. It's late at night. You find yourself walking towards the rectory where Ludovic is staying. He's invited you for some simple hospitality. Uh, you've already got the feeling that the night might be a little more, little involve a little more than that. 
checking your location it gets it dressed you deduce from your next area you look and you see a building mark this symbols and crest of the church like the well that buildings up and down the street this is dark save the window of a single room the second floor you're almost certain that this is where Ludo Vicchio is carefully you, should, you try to handle the door find it unlocked oh this is exciting indeed what's life that little danger all I can think of how many things could go wrong with this is there go on your heart quick and excitement you step inside <clears throat> a few few moments you realize it's just the darkness the hallways are already lit up with a few rays of sunlight emanating from this rays of light emanating from the lights of the street that peek through the shut windows the whole building is as silent as a monastery this you suppose feels appropriate carefully look up says if I look at this Ludovic is room where the doors ajar he's bent over a desk illuminated by illuminated by a few like can't by by the light of a few candles he goes digitally on a letter and doesn't appear to notice you. Looking for some company father Sedotti. He jumps slightly in his chair but turns around to face you with a content smile. Why hello there. In fact I love some company. Okay. Great to see you. Stanley gently takes you behind and leads you over to a chair near his desk. You take a seat. Suddenly he perks up. Oh wait I have something for, I seem like I've been saying for just such an occasion. He opens a low he opens a low drawer on the desk and lummages through it. Eventually come up with a bundle of cloth he unravel <coughs> he unravel unwraps it to reveal a warm glass bottle without a label. It's it's grappa from our family's vine vineyard, he says proudly, uncorking it with the pop. Wine is more popular these days, but our parents still cling to fast to their traditions. Well, I, well, why not mesh well with some of those traditions? The director admits, gesturing to his Cossack. I must admit, Grappa is the Grappa is very fine, and I've in, and the best enjoyed with others. He pours a clear glass two small glasses. You can only smell its potency. It, he a flush is deep red. No, I mean, quite. It is quite strong. That wasn't my intent. I just thought you'd like it. Content, torment, look at this little, you smile devilishly, take your face up a grapper, it's strong like brandy but sweet like a sour plum dipped in honey. This lingers for a long, lingers for a long while on your tongue. Some minutes pass as you slip leisurely at your expected drinks for Luke, he says there's something else I was hoping to do tonight. I hope you don't think it's too foolish. Our brief time together, you've already taught me so much, I was hoping to teach you something in return. Ew. Specifically, I thought it would be fun to teach you some Italiano. Oh, okay. Now you'd like to learn, uh, like to say something romantic. He blushes, I hope you say that. Okay. <clears> T <throat> Amo, he say, I love you, chuckles and looks into his glass. It's only a few letters, but they're hard to say. You'll have to go to chat, he uh, eventually drain your drinks, he refills your glasses as, you, as, as his own. You pick that up quickly, he says, what else can I teach you? I, I would say grazie di cucur, which is thank you to someone, I really mean it. However, I'd say the pleasure's been all mine. Okay. With the fresh pearls of latte, continue merry making, drain a glass this time, you refill each other's respective drinks. You have quite an ear for languages, I think I can teach you one last phrase we'd like to know. Uh, how do I say stay with me tonight? Hey, ooh. The other week, flushes red, your question really dawns on him. Clears up um, if you really want uh, if you really wanted to say that all you have to say is You're both struck sight by a series of deadly thuds coming from downstairs. What what was that, Ludgris? The only response is he receives is another clatter of noise. Figlio de Ponte, I don't think we're alone alone anymore, he says he hisses at you gravely. Uh I'll investigate and perhaps I can store them. You should hide. Find a hiding place. No, they have much time. You search room for an adequate place to hide. Hide in the wardrobe. Hide under the bed. Hide under the bed. Getting down your hands and knees, you prepare to hide under the bed in the corner. However, on post you realise the bed is too low uh, for the ground for you to fit underneath it. Kissing your breath, you rack your brace for a new plan. You hear footsteps ascending, ascending the stairs. Pell's gone up. You search your roof for an adequate place to hide, hide in the wardrobe, you examine the full side of noting that it seems to right size for you to hide in, that sits in the corner behind the door, hard, making it hard to notice. Settling upon this plan of action, you step into the wardrobe and secret, secret yourself behind the various clothes hanging inside. Inside the close confines of the wardrobe, the sound of your heavy 
of your heavy breathing is all you can hear. Carefully, slow, you try slow your beating heart and quiet and quiet your gasps. <coughs> Door opens to the city. You can watch an older man in Cossack walking in with Ludvicchio. I'm dreadfully soft to serve being the old man says with a tone of voice that implies that the rank is much greater than Ludovico's. That even the apologies are mere courtesy at best. Once I realised I'd forgotten that treaties I heard back as soon as I could. Bees that worry so Ludovico replies with a fourth tune as I was merely spending my time here alone. To be honest, to, truly honest, it's been nice to have some peace. Uh, the time is spent in solitude and contemplation is good for soul. It helps one realise the folly of worldly desires. He certainly does that, Ludovico agrees. You can hear him rummaging through his desk. Occasionally you can hear him drinking, clink a glass together on the desk as it shifts back and forth. And this is what you're looking for, Ludovico pronounces proudly as he sh presumably as he produces something suitably impressive looking from his desk. Ah, magnifique, the basic replies eternally. Thank you again, Ludovico. I'd much as like to stay, I must leave immediately. The sound the sound of your side release is thanked muffled by the clothes you're hiding behind. But ho ho, what is it? What is this? Asked by suddenly, the bishop suddenly uh, asks with a disapproving chuckle. Your heart stops in your chest. Oh, oh what is that? Ludovico asks. The poor can see his dread in his voice. You try to sink further back into your wardrobe, but your shoulder blades are already rubbing against the back of the wall. I see you be deep in your cups and some strong stuff. Uh, strong stuff by the smell of it. In fact, the bishop continues. If you sense that like you've been drinking from two with two glasses. Oh, yeah, Max the Peril out. Oh, yes, the Divicator replies. I suppose the grapper helps pass the time alone. Thank that's what I felt. It was improper to toast alone. Aha, fine, jest. I realised why you'll say full of the But as I said earlier, I must be off. Enjoy yourself. Try not to partake too much. Too many spirits are really good for the spirit. The bishop's footsteps recede out of him and eventually hear the crack of a whip and the sound of a carriage departing for the night. The silence after is long and tense. Well, that could have gone a lot worse than it looked in answers to the room at large before numbly per thanks ready you managed to hide just uh, just hiding in the wardrobe amongst a section of identical cossacks you notice yourself out of the wardrobe making exit lucky i think it's possible despite the situation ah uh, there you are i i don't know about you but i really think don't think my heart could manage to slow down at all are you all right how are you feeling first i found the danger rather thrilling I admit a certain amount of element of drama to the proceedings. He says you grind awkwardly. Yeah, could I, I mean like I like to interrupt with a kiss. Ooh! You could tense up remember it hits me so the uh, tension melts so he places his hand on the middle of your back and steps closer. I'm the think so seduced him. You have to admit this is uh, he's very funny to toy with. Later when you find some arts are getting ready to head home, you look at the apartment window, spot Ludovica waving at you, you rev back because as devilish as you are, you're not a monster. The night uh, ended much more tensely than you anticipated. I think my little Vic is going to be thinking about that for quite a while. We've seduced a priest. <laughs> I don't know what I feel about that. You walk home with exaggerated elegance as you strike uh, in your stride, you lose yourself in, in, in a fancy. In it, you are bold, dangerous, perhaps great tempest of all time. The night lantern is brighter than ever, and you wonder if it's merely fancy after all. It appears you'll have to shot him as a consequence for the, uh, for the peril has accumulated so far as finally come home to roost. Your various social missteps and misdies have earned you much scorn. A rumour uh, you yourself make use of has turned against you. It appears that those in past that despise you and up in this group starts to seek out, make sure you know your place. Okay. You've, laying, you've lost quite a bit of credibility. You've lost some faith with everyone. Okay. Fair enough. I knew that would come in. With the wrath expanded upon you, managed to gain some breathing room. However, you have not all forgotten your transgressions. Uh, they have not forgotten the transgressions against you, against them. You've lost most of your peril. Fine. Ah, right. It's basically, you hit, you hit, you, you max out your peril. You lose favour with lots of people. Remember, it's still early days in your story. As time goes, the consequences of the rising of peril become more dire. Ah, it's still early in the story. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Okay. Right, the political hobbyists in France have, bre have breathlessly following have been breathlessly following the events of the state journal over the last few weeks, as their watchful eyes lead to a stunning re revelation, and their watchful eyes are led to a stunning revelation. This revelation is that state journal is currently accomplished absolutely nothing, while the king has attempted to keep the discussion focused on tax reform to do with France's crumbling budget. Every single debate is stalled out due to fights over voting rights and representation. 
members of the third estate won't let the issue go as the only state they're the only state who pay taxes under the current system however any attempt to change will inevitably shut down most of the first and second estates who both pay no taxes and each are just as many votes as third estate yet nobility of the first is that managed to maintain the upper hand they have their backing of tradition slowly the third estate's continued demands for such unprecedented solution in regards to the representation has made them seem like bickering children the longer this impasse lasts, the more tension will build. However, if it keeps building, then it won't long before something snaps. And so, in light, in Paris, life goes on. So, my remember, yes, it's, it's kind of built. So, while we continue our little our little life in Paris, the the seeds of the revolution continue to build behind us. I can't believe we I can't believe we seduced Sadotti. <laughs> right, what we're looking at that. So, what we are now? So, what are you? Uh, oh, we've got another. We've got another date with. Uh, we've got another date with Sadotti. Excellent. Let's look at the old wardrobe. That'll do for nice rendezvous. I suspend the first day. Get ready. You head out for your rendezvous. You're neither well rested nor exhausted. Cool. You return to Cyril. Yeah, back here again. We know what happens here. Since as you're approaching, you stand just enough. Yep. So basically, nobody knows where that plausible dynability. You've best even look upon you. He says, "I feel best even look upon you." He says with a smile. You catch his eyes lingering on a few choice places. You're going to stagger him out of favour of Ludovico. Looks, he takes his gaze off you and examines your location. Ludovico's eyes light up. He looks at the real landscape. Yep. Yep. We've again same as ever. Yep. Okay, that quite well. Can't we seduced him, didn't we? Right, let's look at the map because we've got exhausted. We need to get rid of that at some point. Let's have a look what we can do. So we've got the Master of Letters, we've got Balance of Power, Music to the Ears, Fabric Shortage, Unwilling Confessor. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm no desire to get that one. Balance of Power. I, we've <laughs> cool let's look this one down by the water you come across an unusual man of many talents a chance conversation that may hold whole power in the subtly altered for the future okay let's have a look at this one then you decide to spend the day walk alongside the river halfway through your walk you notice some hitting the water just right lending brilliant light to the colorful ships and boats it's a chance moment that looks as beautiful as a painting you pause to lean against the railing to take just to take it all in nearby you watch a small private ferry bump into a lavish pleasure craft igniting a steam of insults and violent oaths from the parts of the two crafts <laughs> just as a fairman pulls out his pulls his oar after the water to hit someone you notice that you're not watching the scene alone a man in a black and white in black and white the curious brooch on his on his jacket that's the brooch is watching the same scene as yourself. Beautiful music, isn't it? He says quietly. Uh, I wouldn't call two men threatening to <laughs> threaten the virtue of each other's mother. I wouldn't call two men threatening the virtue of each other's mother's music. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so you hear it too, he says, a voice earnest yet analytical. Credibility's gone up. There's musicality to all things after all. Music is mathematics, and mathematics can be found everywhere in the natural world. Okay. It's a hobby of mine to seek out new sounds and see if they can be incorporated into my next composition. As chaotic as it seems, even this even this everyday conflict has a familiar rhythm, order and temper, just like music. Yes, Angela Strasner, at your service, madame, he gestures to himself. Time to meet you, madame de Coff. We spoke, we spoke with Mr. Kill, I just, I just realised that you may be able to help me. I have a decision that's left me quite me feeling quite divided i've issued finished a new composition i'm looking for a sponsor who could help me fund the first performance of it i don't know which is i don't know which which to pursue as of right now the two groups of the most influential are in, in the one of the church and the bourgeoisie i'm certain my composition will bring popularity to whoever sponsors it but i don't know who would be who would be best for me what are your thoughts approach the church they're sponsoring composers since time immemorial bourgeois the best choice they're ample wealth and willing to explore new ideas. Church. That's a good point. He nods along, coming along, uh, coming around to your idea. I start petitioning my associates in the church post haste. 
the church treasurer has gone. The church has gone up again. Power. Pause to check his pocket watch. Uh, it seems I should I should go about my business. Enjoy the rest of your day, Yvette. And Jolos excuses himself with a quick bow, and you're all alone again. Look out upon the river, and it seems of conflict between two boats must have been resolved, that anyone being sent to the bottom of the river. Spare a moment so you close your eyes and listen to the sounds of the city, perhaps just in your imaginary things, but it sounds almost musical. Okay. That was interesting. I'm not sure what actually did, but journal. So these are the two notables we know so far. The church... Yeah, so again, it's still the power is still with the military and the crown. Because where are your bets with that one then? But do I mean okay? Calendar. All right, we have got one level of exhaustion. I think now is a suitable place to leave it for today. We've started to use the dot because you know why not? You know, so let's see how that goes. And we're still early in the game as well, and how long we've been playing now. This is crazy. Right, so what, what, what's our next steps? Paris, okay, explore Paris. We've got Master of Letters and we've got this. I think the next thing we should do, push through along, visit Sadotti. Not visit Sadotti. Visit Armand, find out what he's up to. Do that. So let's go back. So we, I think we should stop pushing this through along a little bit. Right, so we rest then. In fact, I'm going to do that now. Rest, rest it. We want to go to this party with... We want to get this party with uh, with no exhaustion because it doesn't have our credibility. Yep, we know all of that. Right. So we're going to go accept again. Think of someone new, mate. So right. So we've going to we're going to have. Right. Let's look at this then. So we're going to have party today for the military. We're going to have a rest day, and then we're going to have Sadotti, and then we've got the crown. Right. Okay. And then, so we, so I reckon then, so we'll we'll do military party. We'll rest. Then we'll do Ludovico, and then we'll do the crown. And then on the third, we should then on the third we should then go and pursue Armand and find who he's up to. Anyway, let me know how you've been going. If you've been playing it yourself, let me know, let me know, let me know what kind of adventures you've had. If you've had the same kind of stuff I've been doing. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. I shall see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye.